Moving on to chapter 14 today. Welcome back, and let's just jump into it. Large biology, maybe. And I say maybe because I'm not really 100% sold on any of these examples. It's just they're interesting and worth discussing, I think, so let's discuss it. First up, we have these things I've showed two or three times now. Uh, these, what I'm calling claws or teeth, possibly, in Lake Pupo, Bolivia. And it's along the side of the lake. It's about 12 miles from here to here, from there to there. And each one's about five miles long. So that's to be considered. I mean, how, how could an animal that large survive? Obviously, that's, that's kind of BS. But uh, once again, there's the possibility that a grow ray was used or like some type of, um, I don't know, large, uh, yeah, enlarger of some kind. Just There was like a, a normal sized animal and someone uh, blew it up to an enormous size with some kind of high tech. I suppose that's possible. Or there's the possibility that these features are deceptively made to look biological, but they're not biological. So again, the idea of like pseudo-sensical or nearly sensical gibberish. So maybe this type of gibberish is um, made to look like it might be biological when in fact it's not. So that may be the case. I do find the topic of giants in the past uh, pretty fascinating. Giant trees, giant people. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty fascinating stuff. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised either way if these turn out to be claws or not claws, just because nothing would surprise me at this point, really. Um, but it's these right here I'm referring to, and here's a good look at one of them. And it kind of looks like a shark tooth if you see the shape of it, the outline. So, like, here's, like, the base of it, and then here's the tip here. And then it's as if, like, you could imagine if you're looking at it from the bottom, like, this is the bottom of it. And like uh, this is the uh, the base, and it was like sheared flat. So like there was some base protruding and some tip protruding, like up out of the surface, and then um, that the protruding part was like shaved off more or less. Uh, that's possible. Um, so it kind of looks to me just like something which uh, had like was three-dimensional uh, and then uh, was kind of like cut in half or cross-sectioned uh, or had the, the protruding bits um, shaved off or removed. So this image explains it a bit on a different claw or tooth or whatever it is. Base and tip protruding out of the ground. So this would be the base and then this would be the tip of the, the claw or tooth. Like, like in this image, kind of looks like the, like a jaw of a, uh, any, like a T-Rex or any number of predators, just like a, like the, the chin or the, the front of the face. And then here's the, like the lower jaw maybe, and, uh, some teeth possibly. I mean, how could, how could that exist? A 12 mile long thingamajig animal creature? I have no idea. I mean... It just, the resemblance is uncanny, in my opinion, to claws or teeth. Uh, so, and then for reference, here is a bear claw. So this is kind of what I'm uh, going for, the, uh, like the, the curving underneath. So if we were to dig down beneath the surface, we would find more of these, more of these claws. And then the tip is protruding, and then the base of it is where it connects to the, the skin or whatever, the padding. So... So curling it up underneath like that, like a paw or something. So paw, jaw, maybe, I don't know. And then uh, we're going to take a look at that in Google Maps. And then we'll also jump over here to Lake Titicaca in Peru. And right here is, uh, it just I just find it funny that this looks quite a bit like a titty. Uh, there's a, this would be the breast, like the cross section or a cut in half uh, down the middle of a, a breast and this would be like the areola right here and this would be the nipple and then this would be like uh, 
I don't know, the milk passage or whatever, you know, some type of uh, anatomical feature there. Um, so I think it's an interesting possibility. And then maybe right here is a mound of caca, <laughs> titty caca. I think whatever is doing the tooling of Earth has a sense of humor, or at least incorporates humor into it for some reason. And uh, like the knobs on the blocks and stuff, like that's all very whimsical. So I think there's a whimsical component here. Uh, let's go to Google Earth and check these areas out. Uh, let's do Titicaca first, and then we'll do the claws. So here's like Titicaca, blah, blah, blah. And I mean, from north to south, titty, caca. Could this be a giant mound of petrified poo? And why right here, not over here or over here? Why did I single this out? I don't know, it just kind of looks like a pile, but um, it just n next to the titty just happens to be, uh, I don't know. I mean, that would be funny. Do I believe that? No, and it could be anything, could be natural, could be artificial mountains, who knows, who knows. Um, but again, there, there's, I think there's some element of whimsy behind all this. Okay, and then, yeah, just in my opinion, that looks like a cross-section breast. And then it's got like the uh, the patchy sh uh, pattern, potentially, or the scrapey-scrapey along the whole landscape here. Uh, every Like every square inch of it is, uh, well, obviously there's populated modern stuff going on uh, and all these fields and stuff. But some of it looking, I don't know, like a big breast. I don't know how else to say it. And what this would be, I have no idea. Uh, yeah, and why, why it would be there or how it got to be there, I have no idea. Again, grow ray or, uh, or maybe teleported from an alternate universe or something like that. Alternate reality where creatures are bigger, much, much bigger or uh, any number of possibilities. So just looking around the surrounding landscape, whatever. Okay, let's go to uh, just down south. Here's like Pupo in Bolivia. We've got this set of claws or teeth potentially. And then this up here as well, maybe. Uh, this maybe one like some associated feature and Almost like it skidded to a stop. I don't know about that. Uh, just the general idea kind of behind this uh, this whole chapter, uh, large biology, is that there may be like body parts, miscellaneous body parts of a large size like strewn about and crafted into the landscape we know as Earth's uh, landscape. So, uh, I believe I have quite a few place marks in the area of like artificial lines and stuff. So yeah, these large scale lines, who knows, maybe a tractor or something, but like this. So I think it's a fascinating concept that some portion of earth is like, or of the, um, the soil and rock is like actual former biological material. And then subsequently it's like machined into or uh, reformatted into some type of uh, suitable landscape or less, less obvious landscape, you know, where the, the biological component is no longer as quite as obvious. And then this almost looks like a split nail. Like if you see this as a claw, here, and then this is another one. It looks like this is like a split. You know, if you've ever seen like a cat when its claws are split, um, just kind of like how, how we would get a hangnail. Uh, so like I, know, I remember my cat used to have nails, or I mean claws, I guess, which would kind of split like this. And you'd have a little sliver of claw hanging off. So like this would be the rest of the claw, the main claw. And this was like a split. So it kind of resembles that to me. And here, base, base, and then uh, claw or tooth. 
another one here buried mostly and then here's another this is the most shark tooth shaped one and then possibly another thing here and then there's these patchy patterns all along the landscape here pretty ubiquitously and then so that would be possible evidence for like the machining aspect of it so yeah these uh poly polygonal or uh, rectangular patches uh, especially these dark brown areas so we've got the weird ridges and stuff so it occurred to me that these might be dermal ridges but they're too weird and wonky and square and haphazard to uh, to be biological ridges i think i think these are just stacked stone walls and then this potential bumpiness who knows could be like flesh of some kind it occurred to me that these these brown areas might be like lumps of tissue i guess i was heavier into the the whole mud fossil discussion uh a while back probably like a year ago uh, i'm not quite as into it now i haven't been following it recently uh just been kind of uh trying to formulate my own theories but let's see yeah the patchiness of these areas and then uh, like possible like foot padding here like padding of the foot like in the, the bear claw image we saw where this is like the under part of the foot like padding or I forget what it's called but the, the paw pad foot pad and then this would be more of it um, and then it's got kind of a potentially flattened look to it maybe not it might just be that the angle or the, the image but there's some kind of worked over look to this whole area uh, not to mention all this other stuff so i think that's pretty much it for this i mean i've looked around I, I can't say i've really seen anything else on google earth similar to this area um i mean with uh something so uncannily rep uh looking like claws or teeth or a particular body part i guess titty caca is pretty uncanny but uh the claws for me are very uncanny and quick look back in history i guess why not um but yeah this is the only real example of uh a claw or a tooth that i would say i've seen that seems convincing or compelling to me at least that i remember off the top of my head maybe i've seen others and i can't remember okay let's see like i said five miles across or uh for each one and then about 15, 20 miles wide, and then uh, history, 1984, looking roughly the same. Okay. Yeah, nothing much changing, and could be any number of natural features. Obviously, just happens to look just happened to take the form of a claw or tooth it's just if it were just if it were just this one i could write it off but since it's like a row of them like this one looks similar and this one too it's like man that really looks like a set of claws or alternatively like a jaw jawline or something okay that's about enough of that so let's move on and by the way um this, uh, this section, large biology, will not be very Google Earth tour heavy, so pretty much just going to do uh, the images from here on out. And um, in this video, just going to get through as many images as I can until it gets too long, and then I'll break it up into, an, into another uh, section. Okay, so next up, let's talk about uh, this one in Mauritania. This, the eye of Africa, as it's called, 
the Rashad structure or the Eye of Africa. Uh, so this is the thumbnail for this video. And uh, I want to discuss the rather amusing possibility <laughs> that um, this is actually a fish eye. <laughs> so, I mean, even I don't find that particularly compelling. Again, wouldn't surprise me if it's true, but it's just an interesting concept. First of all, why would I even think that? Um, uh, so there's this, um, not my idea, originally not my find, uh, from Mud Fossil University and or others have pointed out, uh, that's a YouTube channel, by the way, Mud Fossil University, um, that uh, this resembles a dragon, and there's like a biblical story of the dragon slaying the fish or something like that, and this would be the fish right here. So like fish's tail, and then uh, the fin, like the top of the fin, and then like the front of the face over here, and like the eye, and yeah, this would be a fish. <laughs> so the dragon's about 900 miles long. This is, I don't know, probably like 500 miles long. So again, how plausible that would be, I couldn't tell you. I mean, maybe maybe up here in, um, what is it, uh, Lake Pupo, maybe these claws or teeth are like cut out from this dragon dude and plopped halfway around the world, like just for the hell of it. And then along that same lines, like, maybe this fish's eye was like like just plucked out and put right there <laughs> and then raised over with whatever type of post-processing like uh some type of resurfacing or reconfiguring to to tidy it up so i mean that's just just an idea so here's the the theory like uh, some dragon again how something this large could exist on earth in our typical environment uh, who knows, but, um, I guess the story is the Greek Titan Atlas and sea monster Ketos. So this would be Ketos, and then, uh, the Eye of Africa would be his eye. So let me try and draw a rough outline for you of this guy. So here's the, the top fin of the, the fish, allegedly, uh, or that's as this, uh, line of thinking goes. And then here would be like his tail fin right here, uh, something along these lines. And then uh, somewhere, it's not perfectly clear, but somewhere along here, his face would end like around there or so, or depending on what kind of fish we're talking about. And then uh, this would be, I'm guessing where his eye is. And then this is the, the Rashad structure. So it's roughly the size of what his pupil might be um, just a thought. So here's a close-up. Here's where the eye would have been. And then this seems to size up right about the same as, like, where his eye would go. There's kind of some semblance of a round feature here, possibly. And this would be, like, the outline of the fish. I mean, it, it sounds absurd to me as well. But uh, given some of the other shit we've seen, I mean, would it surprise you? Uh, it's just, it's, it's pretty out there. It's pretty wacky. Uh, and I should note that, like, okay, if we're saying this is a, a fin, what about like this? Because that's basically the same type of feature. That almost looks like uh, the same type of flow of rock or uh, landscape. So, I mean, why why should I... Isn't it cherry picking to call this a fin and this not a fin? Um, I would agree with that. Uh, so, um, like, the, like, there's attempts to call this area of the so called dragon, like, um, scale or, uh, let's see, spines or like stuff coming off of his back. But then we can see similar features, like, all over the world, like, uh, even like right here and just like, it's a, it's just a common type of rock formation, so I don't know that we can be too sure that these are biological features. Uh, okay, uh, let's see what other images I have. So this is just a few photographs of the Eye of Africa, aka Rashad structure, and it's just a big uh, set of concentric rings. And here's the surrounding landscape. Awesome. And then there's a number of 
possibly artificial straight lines in the area. Like I said, possibly some tidying up or possible, you know, former biological features like blood vessels and shit. Who knows? Um, so here's a fish eye, and then there's that. So it could be multiple rings of uh, whatever. I mean, obviously different types of animals. You're going to have different types of eyes. They're going to look different. I mean, this these flows in here, these kind of resemble the, the eyeball, the outer eye uh, veins and stuff or whatever, like the... I'm drawing a blank, but the, the outer portion of the eye, not the pupil, but the the colored portion around it, like the little stringy stuff in the eye, kind of resembles that, but it could be any number of things, including just flows of mud and water runoff and whatever. But uh, uh, I, don't, I obviously don't have any strong evidence for this. I just think it's an interesting possibility. So I just wanted to uh, throw the idea out there. Okay, um, so just a bit more on this dragon guy. Um, actually, let me go back a second and uh, just make sure I got the, the fish aspect of it. So this would be the, the general outline of the fish. So I tried to size this little clip art to the, the rough uh, place where the fish would be. So hopefully that gives you an idea. So. Here's the clip art, and then, yeah, like roughly like right there. Okay, so let's uh, get back on this dragon aspect of it. So this would be some pretty large biology, about 900 miles long, obviously. Pretty big, so head, tip of the nose about right here, and then tip of the tail somewhere back here-ish. And uh, let's zoom in a bit. So this would be his head, like here's the tip of the nose, Here's the top of the snout, and then this would be like his forehead, this is his eye, and then this is like the back of his head, and here's his neck, and uh, th like the long thin neck, and then with some like patternation or like feathers or whatever the heck uh, off the back of him. That's the idea. Go to uh, Mud Fossil University channel if you want to watch more on this. Um, he has a lot of videos on it. Um, I'm not sold on the idea that this is a dragon, obviously. Um, could be disinfo, could just be miss, uh, a good guess, but misses the mark. Um, any number of things, obviously, and uh, including natural. I mean, it could just be periodelia. I always pronounce that word wrong, but just finding patterns, like uh, face patterns and animal patterns in randomness and um, trying to make, like, see see patterns where there are none more or less uh, so that that's a strong possibility for this one i would say um but you know maybe his teeth were torn out and thrown over in lake pupo in bolivia it's possible um and so what he was slain and then petrified somehow with some kind of advanced tech yeah i guess that would be the idea but uh, here's a little drawing so you get an idea of the, the general shape of it, like a long, thin head and a long, thin neck. So the head, the neck, and then these would be his legs down here or something like that. This would be his back, I guess, and like maybe his wings up here. Who knows? I mean, why would it be there in the first place? I don't know. Again, there's apparently some old legends of like this, the giant dragon fighting the giant fish uh that again it wouldn't surprise me if that whole story is like a, a fabrication and or like a plant or false falsely planted um uh eddy or offshoot or like false trail of breadcrumbs just like a uh um a stale rabbit hole to chase or like a dead end rabbit hole um of uh, juicy, juicy story to, to chase and then um, kind of waste your time on. It could be like a deliberate mystery, you know. So maybe this and this, the dragon and fish, um, fish-like, dragon-like and fish-like features, maybe they're not actually dragon and fish, but they're meant to uh, look like they might be uh, per this 
protocol which uh, resurfaced the Earth. So maybe as the th um, tooling of Earth process was happening, you know, reconfiguring Earth uh, to whatever reformatting uh, standards, as that was going on, maybe part of the process was um, making uh, false features or pseudo features or like um, deceptive features. So maybe just for the for that purpose, it uh, created like a pattern which looks like a dragon but obviously isn't, or a pattern which looks like it might be a fish and obviously isn't. And then this looks looks like it could be an eye of the fish and obviously isn't. And maybe it's not that. Maybe it's not Atlantis. Maybe it's just a uh, a ring made there to make us waste our time studying it. You know what I mean? Um, and then there's also the possibility of whimsy. Like it just did this like because they got a kick out of it. They think it would be funny to draw a big dragon on the surface or something like that. Uh, so a whole bunch of possibilities. I've pretty much touched on most of the ones that uh, strike me as plausible in this video and previous videos. So um, I guess that should probably do it for this segment. Okay, and then a uh, similar note, this is the middle of the Pacific, and uh, again, I pointed this one out once or twice before, uh, not my find, somebody else's, but uh, someone was saying this looks like a dra dragon skull, like uh, the eye or something, and then the back of the head right here, and then like the mouth, so this would be the head, and like stuff coming off its head or whatever shoulder and like Hawaii would be his wing <laughs> and then this would be his body and then here's his tail um, and then this would be his other arm or something like that um, I do like the Hawaiian Islands uh, it is like we can observe volcanism happening and the traditional explanation for the Hawaiian Islands is like migrating volcanoes or something like that along a fault line or tectonic activity or something that seems very plausible so I don't know that I would uh, say this is a dragon wing over just volcanoes um, uh, spitting up land and creating islands. Uh, and also this guy's tail is like super long. It goes on for like another like, I don't know, a thousand miles or more. So it's, it seems disproportionate if it is a tail. Um, so uh, this guy I'm not very sold on. Uh, it just, there's a slight possibility that it's a freaking dragon or that it's, um, the terraforming deal, but terraformed to look like it might be a dragon or just natural patterns, which just happen to kind of sort of look like a dragon. I mean, it's not super uncanny. It's just like kind of sorta to me. So, um, it could just be natural patterns uh whatever yeah so here's a closer look the eye somewhere around here the the ear ish back of the head top of the head and this this stuff coming off of his body this would be like his rib cage area one arm the other arm and yeah i mean it's it's there's a there's a resemblance for sure but uh i would say it's not not enough for me to put money on at this point and uh, one more comment, like I said in a previous video, uh, that <laughs> I noticed someone going around um, just like circling random shit, like a, like a fake profile or a troll or something, just like circling random stuff and calling it dragons. Um, and uh, this may have been one of theirs, so this could be like a troll getting to me, um, getting their, their trollness on, onto people's videos and onto people's radar. So... Uh, uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. There, there are like fake profiles posting fake stuff, so uh, keep that in mind. And then another idea is that like areas like this are like p piles of bodies and stuff that have been transmogrified or petrified or whatever, like body bodies and body parts of some kind, like like this, like this image, like this string of. Uh, like obviously this one kind of looks like a guy laying on the ground like face down and then these it's an inter interesting look to it i would say like maybe this is a bunch of animals and people different animals um and they are just lined up and 
petrified or enlarged or whatever, you know. Um, this is on the ocean floor in, um, so here's Alaska and here's the thing between Alaska and Russia. Here's Russia over here. And then this is where that uh, line of, you know, anthropomorphic fi uh, figures is. So, uh, yeah, there's kind of a, a resemblance to like a person, maybe a horse or something, you know, and some more stuff down here to consider. And then we also have to consider the similarity to, to this stuff here and over here. Uh, it's, it's an interesting possibility that um, it's just body parts, like corpses used to comprise some of some or much of the Earth's surface. Um, uh, it's, again, it uh, wouldn't surprise me, but it's not one of my top guesses, I would say. I don't know. I there's a strong chance that this just happens to look like it's just random patterns that are natural patterns that happen to look somewhat like a person here and like could be some string of bodies or something like that but uh yeah just for your consideration there's that and then this one this is my find so <laughs> Not one I'm super proud of, but um, again, this whole area looking like it might be bodies. This right here, here's our potential dragon guy or whatever. Um, in this image, though, I want to highlight uh, these right here. Uh, it struck me that these somewhat resemble squid tentacles. <laughs> I know it sounds silly, but uh, they, I would just say resemble. I wouldn't say I think they are. I just say like uh, the tip of a squid tentacle, you know, uh, where the like the the end of the tentacle is, and there's that little nub at the end of the tentacle with the the suckers, like even these bumps, like uh, like suckers um, along the tentacle or something like that. Uh, again, this would be pretty massive, hundreds of miles long or thousands. So. Uh, um, I don't know how that would work, but it just kind of resembles it. So I thought I'd point it out. That's why the, I put the maybe in this title because it's all it's all pretty sketchy. Just kind of uh, casual conversation, uh, just pointing out possibilities with no real way of proving or disproving, obviously. And then here between South America and Antarctica, there's this little strip of land which kind of resembles again a squid tentacle and any number of natural explanations for that, obviously geological, tectonic, uh, et cetera, et cetera, volcanic. And then, um, yeah, I mean, who knows? There's many possibilities, but kind of looks like a tentacle tip with the, the bumps there and a number of other places we could point out the same thing. Okay, so uh, let's switch gears a little bit. And um, so I pointed this out in one of my previous videos, uh, I think in Sheared Flatland maybe, but um, uh, okay, so the Wikipedia page for Butt, which is this type of like flat land formation, like a little miniature mesa. Um, okay, these images are un more or less unrelated to this conversation, but these are the images from that page. You got this Devil's Tower in Wyoming. Uh, this guy, this, this, and then uh, one, uh, this guy, and one more time, I'll point out this. This is the last image, uh, Wikipedia page for butt. And obviously, anybody can upload an image. And I looked at the uploader and didn't really find anything fishy or informative or anything. Um, so uh, if we rotate the image, obviously, it looks like the back of a skull, and then like the eye cavity, and then the snout. And then like the front fangs, the mouth, this fang, this fang, and the chin, and then um, so like a almost like a a predator skull, like a T Rex skull or a dog skull or something like that. So one, two, two, three, four, maybe five, or maybe even a snake or something like that. Possible eye there. So it's just like uh, it's kind of abstract and subjective, um, but I just found it interesting that it was on the Wikipedia page. So. So when we see stuff like this, 
Um, in some cases, it might be like portions of bodies or body parts like sticking up and then there's a big something sticking down below the surface, but just the, the protruding uh, exposed portion was uh, revamped so that it didn't look so suspicious as possible. Again, the idea of like uh, the movie Avatar, like where there's like a gigantic paradise of huge trees and huge animals. And then it's just like uh, the man proverbially or uh, stereotypically the man comes and uh, just like bulldozes it and uh, just uh, ruins everything and then uh, re um, rewrites everything with a kind of uh, garbled or dumbed down version of what was there before. So they, they reused components of what they had and made the surface. Man, I don't know, there's so many possibilities, but I just think that's an interesting image to include on the Wikipedia, Wikipedia page for this type of landform. Okay, um, all right, so let's move to Devil's Tower in Wyoming. This is a butt, B-U-T-T-E, and it is uh, a natural basalt uh, or um, volcanic basalt columns, these hexagonal columns here of uh, volcanic something or other and that's the, the conventional theory anyway uh, there's obviously it resembles a giant tree stump that's possible and I'm not sh quite sure how tall it is at least hundreds of feet uh, it's so it's pretty big so this would be a very large tree stump you know like 400 feet wide or something like that and uh, so there's that possibility and just consider it, you know, it kind of looks like organic material almost. Although natural geological processes can resemble uh, biological patterns as well, just because math is math wherever it occurs. Like even just like a pure uh, mathematical algorithm can create these organic wavy hexagon patterns. So, um, and nature uses pretty much the same math everywhere uh, or I mean I guess that's a, a deeper conversation but I think you get the picture so a few different looks of it here and uh, yeah I mean it looks like a tree stump I think that's very plausible however there's the other theory um, that uh, this mud fossil university uh, conversation addresses which is that this might be a uh, like an ankle or something like that uh, where these are tendons and then this is like the abrupt transition between the tendon and the the bone or the tendon and the muscle something like that can't remember the exact theory but um, so like this would be the the heel or somewhere over here would be the heel of the foot then this is like an ankle of something and then these are tendons and the wrinkle here is like uh, where the tendon snapped or something like that and then whatever was up here was just discarded I guess so these this wrinkle up here theoretically according to this mud fossil theory is like the the snapped part or the uh, there was a lot of tension here and then there was some kind of sever on the the foot and then like this the tendon wrinkled at the top of the tendon. So this would be tendinous material, I believe, is the theory. And uh, this would be the wrinkled tendon where there was a lot of tension, and then it snapped. And then we see these flows here looking quite organic, obviously. Again, fits the bill to me of like tree cells or some type of vegetation cells, or I mean, yeah, maybe tendon tendons. I don't, uh, hmm. Again, I'm not super sold on the whole tendons thing, uh, if you follow that conversation, but um, I keep it on the table. Let's say that. So this is not Devil's Tower, but it's a different site, but it's the same general ideas. These hexagonal basalt columns seen uh, many places around the world. Oh, and then I also wanted to raise the possibility, uh, one second. So I wanted to raise the possibility one more time that 
this type of pattern is uh, actually maybe artificial. And so when we see this, we're seeing a big deception muffin. <laughs> like, okay, so like uh, something with high tech and um, a proclivity for deception created this f gigantic feature um, strategically to look like it might be a foot or it might be a tree or it might be a natural. So strategically meant to straddle multiple possible uh, uh, explanations for its origin uh, by design and by the type of rock and by uh, all the little details that went into crafting this. So right down from the, the curvature of the, the base here to the wrinkles at the top, that may all be strategic um, nonsense by some sort of very advanced uh, deception protocol and or uh, um, <clears throat> uh, terraforming protocol. Uh, so this may be like artificial in origin, but meant to look like an organic remnant of some kind. Um, so hopefully I explained that well enough. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Yeah, again, I have no, I have zero evidence for that. I have zero evidence. Uh, circumstantial evidence, I would say. I think there's plenty of deceptive stuff elsewhere, like in archaeological sites and stuff, and the rest of the surface of the earth and whatnot, and plenty of gibberish. So this may be like a type of gibberish. Uh, it's just I haven't heard the artificial angle discussed much on this particular landmark, the Devil's Tower in Wyoming. Like, everyone thinks it's a tree stump or it's an ankle or something. And I, I just wanted to say, well, yes, maybe to both of those. So maybe tree stump, maybe ankle, um, but maybe artificial, though. Like, maybe mimicry of natural patterns with some type of artificial technology. So, now that that said, let's keep moving. So here's some... Uh, Looks like from a biology textbook or something, just the structure of tendons and the, the compartmentalization and the, the nesting of these hexagonal and uh, bundled cables, more or less, of biological materials. So this would be like reminiscent of the uh, basalt columns. So that would be good circumstantial evidence that there's uh, the basalt columns are uh, tendons. And then, of course, any number of cellular vegetation structures would might also have this type of uh, hexagonal or similar pattern in it. So, this could be Devil's Tower could be any number of biological things, and then could also be mimicry of biological things with artificial uh, weirdness. Okay, so here's another spot. Not sure where this is, but uh, uh, similar idea of uh, wavy uh, tops of tendons where the uh, tendon snapped. I guess there's something called an abrupt tran. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, abrupt transition where the tendon connects to either the muscle or the bone or something. I can't remember, but um, apparently the transition is very abrupt and like when it snaps. There's uh, all this tension that gets released, and um, apparently it would uh, make these little wavy patterns in the, the top portion of the tendons, if that's true. And uh, I find that um, compelling. I don't believe it outright. I don't subscribe to it, but it's, it's a plausible explanation. So I keep it uh, on the table as a possible explanation for these. Obviously, there's any number of natural explanations any number of artificial weirdness explanations, including mimicry of natural patterns and or uh, gibberish or any number of deceptive patterns uh, or uh, attention traps. Like this is just a, a big nothing burger, again, designed to get you to study it, uh, to mystify you, to bewilder you, uh, and ultimately disorient and disempower you, potentially. Or there's maybe a whimsical component here. And... Um, you know, just doodling, more or less. Maybe this is the doodling of gods. They're just scribbling on the surface with uh, goofy patterns. That's possible. Who knows? But just wanted to point it out there. So here's a good look at a tendon. 
nice little dissection here. You see all the cable like, um, like almost like steel cables or like uh, very uh, sinewy or uh, stringy, like kind of like string cheese, but like super solid uh, and tough, tough material. So we could imagine Devil's Tower being like uh, a portion of this, like a chunk of this. Uh, it's possible any number of the basalt, uh, hexagonal basalt column places around the world could have some component of this to that part, part of a tendon and okay let's discuss tendon balls so uh so there's the the knee or the joint or whatever or the tendons and then there's these um anchor points called tendon balls where the uh the tendon anchors to i guess the bone or some other type of tissue and uh so the idea is there's these stone, fear, uh, stone spheres and similar found all throughout the world. And um, some people think they may be tendon balls. So I'd like to discuss that. And uh, so Mud Fossil University would be the first place I heard this discussed. Uh, so here's uh, Meraki boulders in New Zealand. And see, they're not all spherical. They're kind of... Uh, some of them are fairly spherical, some of them are kind of uh, oblong and oddly shaped. Uh, but they're coming out of the cliffside, uh, like just eroding from the cliffside, like they're embedded in the cliff. And they're just kind of rolling out on the beach. So that's, uh, yeah, that's whatever. Just a few different looks here. And could certainly be natural, I would say. Here's what they look like on the inside interior. Here's a broken one, and you see the like quartzite or some some type of stone here. Um, so this is what they look like on the inside. Uh, could be giant tendon balls. Could be natural uh, geological formations of some kind. Could be any number of other biological um, uh, components or parts and could also be some type of deceptive feature, just arbitrary gibberish, you know, arbitrary patterns. So stones embedded in the landscape may be an arbitrary artificial pattern designed to uh, spice up the, the bigger picture and make things even more confusing and bewildering as possible, you know, just by injecting uh, extraneous details that don't add up to anything. That's always possible in my book based on what we've seen. Um, I think it's some combination of that, that artificial deception, and also like, uh, like actual significant um, features. So these may be like, I don't know, there may be both large biological body parts and there may be some reconfiguration of those body parts in a deceptive way or rearranging or morphing or transmogrifying or what have you. Uh, I think that's possible. So keep that in mind. A few different looks here. Definitely looking biological and cellular uh, uh, or organic in some sense. So just is what it is. And here's another look at the uh, the joint and then all these little tendon balls and the reason that these tendon balls would remain is apparently because they're like very very tough and resilient and like almost indestructible like very um uh i mean obviously tendons are the parts of the body that have to bear the most load physically so uh, and joints so these tendon balls are going to have to be very resilient i guess is the idea and so the remaining tissue from whatever else, whatever part of the animal this is, uh, it just basically just got decimated in the ages over long time scales. And then the only surviving aspect of these very large animals is uh, the tendon balls, just because they're so tough and resilient. I guess that's the theory. And um, wouldn't surprise me. Uh, just one thing to consider. I mean, who knows? Okay.
So, um, and again, just because the evidence matches a theory doesn't mean it's the right theory. It's, I mean, it's a well-trod observation, but it's worth remembering. Uh, okay, so these little tendon balls embedded in the tissue, and then the tissue becomes mud and dirt, and then erodes away, I guess. And the tendon balls erode more slowly because they're tougher. Okay, so tendon, bone, and then the joints. So I guess this would be the abrupt transition, maybe. And then we've got all these tendon balls. Here's some looks at the tissue. And okay, sites like this, I'm not sure where this is, but it's just a rock wall, which is kind of spitting out these um, spheres and oblong discs and uh, spherical shaped uh, rocks. So the idea is either this is like petrified tissue of some kind and it's ejecting tendon balls as the material erodes away, or in my uh, hypothesis, these could even be um, falsely made to look like they could be any number of things, including tendon balls. So just a deliberate mystery. I think I explained that well enough already, so I'll just move on and show you the images. Um, so many looks to them, and of course any number of natural explanations, just very striking, the appearance of it, uh, all these little balls protruding out from this hard rock here, and good look at it there. This one almost looking like it's donut shaped or kind of a little bit flatter, and Pretty interesting. I don't know. I don't know. Here's another spot. Just a giant stone ball. So these are found in all shapes and sizes, I should mention. Like there's little tiny bead-like ones that are found all over. And then there's these big, uh, there's like hand handheld like grapefruit size ones, uh, golf ball size ones. And then there's this big guy, which is like a, a beach ball size. And then there's even bigger ones that are like six foot, eight foot across, and then even bigger ones, like 50 feet across, potentially, as we'll see in a minute, or a couple minutes, and, uh, yeah, so, I mean, from some, what, former ecosystem, or an ecosystem in a parallel reality with gigantic creatures relative to our, uh, size, the size of organisms we have here, I mean, there's no reason that can't be the case. Like, just maybe somebody with portal technology teleported uh, some big old animals from one place to another, where they, you know, where they from where they do belong to a place like here where they don't belong, where they're way too big for here. And um, uh, just one possibility. I mean, just spitballing here. It kind of looks almost technological. I guess there's that possibility we should acknowledge as well. Like a a metal ball or like some like ball bearing from a uh, some type of um, machine or device. Uh, I don't find that one particularly compelling or even like a little satellite or some something technological uh, mechanical like especially since so many of them are like oddly shaped and organic looking. I, I don't think the um, the ball bearing or the uh, uh, mechanical part uh, angle is particularly plausible. The lines are certainly part of the mystery, uh, worth noting. Uh, maybe like attachment points for the tendons and or uh, remnants of fabrication from like the fake the deception, deceptive manufacture of this ball, uh, according to the, the deception theory or, you know, the artificial terraforming thing I talk about. Uh, so, I mean, these could be dummy features. These lines could be dummy features or like deliberate mystery. So always keep that in mind. Um, but aside from that, uh, assuming they were functional or uh, uh, legitimate features from whatever this is from, 
I mean, I don't know what the lines are. There could be any number of things. Uh, and then there's always the possibility that it's a natural crystallization or growth or, of some kind. So Costa Rica, we have basically the same thing. These ones are more, more perfectly spherical. Not perfectly, but some of them are almost, yeah, almost perfect. So let's, let's throw out this possibility. Ugh, I'm slurring. Uh, let's discuss the possibility that some of these balls are actually um, legitimate uh, either body parts, like tendon balls, or, uh, or even technological parts, or something, something legitimate from the past. And then maybe there's also the possibility that to muddy the water, uh, somebody comes in and just makes a bunch of additional balls and just slightly uh, uh, tweaks the parameters a bit. Like, okay, the other ones look more organic, so let's make these ones look more perfect. And then they just spit out like a couple hundred or thousand of these, uh, spread them around just to confuse the picture and make things more... Um, murky and hard to uh, discern. So I think there's a definite effort to, at least on some level, to obscure the nature of our past. Um, and that may be one strategy to just, you know, make a bunch of uh, additional patterns that, um, and features that don't, uh, that aren't legit, but that slightly resemble or or even largely resemble stuff that already exists, but then it's put there to to muddy the water or to dilute the truth. So here's a couple images, these nice perfect balls. So these may be fabrications, they may be organic and legit, who knows. There's just a few of them arranged. This one's not perfect. And there could be like 10 different explanations or 50 different explanations for these stone balls and uh, so it's not as if I'm saying there's only one explanation um, there could be depending on the site and the particular stone ball there may be may uh, like many different factors at play so there may some of them may be petrified biology some of them may be deceptively manufactured some of them may be uh, mechanical parts. Some of them are certainly natural. So, so don't just uh, jump into one theory just because you like it, obviously. Um, I mean, it should go without saying, but whatever. So here's a really big one. This is like, what, seven, eight feet across probably, maybe six, uh, but it's, it was exposed and then they dug it up and it's just a big, perfect sphere. So, I would go with deliberate mystery on this. I just, that's my, that's what my instinct says. So a, a f, like they, they deliberately left it just like poking out like this or at a depth where it might poke out um, so that it could be found and excavated and studied and, uh, and ultimately used as a um, bewilderment tool. So. <laughs> I think it's certainly possible that somebody just uh, f populated the surface, including um, the surface and beneath the surface, like the the, s the soil and the sediment and up to hundreds of meters or even miles deep. Uh, they just populated it via high tech with deceptive nonsense, <laughs> like just arbitrary features, arbitrary... Uh, uh, what's the word? Things like this big stone ball. Just throw a big stone ball in the middle of a field, and um, and it's a big maze. It gets you chasing your tail. Okay, so like I said, these can be found all over the world, uh, often in fields, just like strewn about, so on, like chilling on the surface, sitting on the surface. This one cracked and halved on the middle. Um, so here's another spot where there's fields of them and you see all the variation like almost none of these are perfectly spherical They're kind of just like blobs uh, So again some of these places may be natural and legit other places 
maybe deception, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here's another field. Here we see three of them um, connected. I think I find that interesting. Uh, this may be Travance, like the stones that grow, or like a, a crystallization process where like um, little knobs and spheres grow off of mineral content. Uh, so this could be an organic growth type of thing. Uh, of course, there's always a deception possibility. It could be tendon balls. Who in the heck knows? And then I'm always looking for tracks like this. Obviously, it could just be a tractor or something, or something modern, a trail. Uh, but I'm always keeping an eye out for paths, tool paths. So many fields of these things in many places. Here, just a couple of miscellaneous images here. Uh, this nothing really to point out. This one's kind of breaking away in layers. Uh, noteworthy. This one also breaking away in layers. That doesn't necessarily lend credence to or uh, or debunk any of the theories. Like I could imagine this layering happening for any of the explanations. So. Okay, and then here's a cool look at one that's protruding from a cliffside, and it's kind of cut in half like this. And it almost seems like it's on display to me, like just how it's cut in half right at the, the cliff's edge. Um, I mean, maybe archaeologists, archaeologists, archaeologists or uh, uh, geologists uh, excavated it or cut it in half themselves. But if this is the uh, the way it was found, like already like almost neatly cut in half like this, like right at the edge of the cliffside. It's almost like it's uh, like a prop <laughs> to me. Like, hey, look at me, what am I? Potentially. Kind of looks like a gumball, like cut in half. Hmm. Yeah, it's food for thought. Uh, okay, I wanted to show this image one more time, the tendon balls. Uh, and the uh, these anchoring uh, tendons, or um, I, I can't remember all the technical terminology, so I apologize, but like, I think there's something called a tendon emphasis point. Uh, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but, or uh, anchor point, or s some kind of uh, like anchor cord. This may be like exposed tendon or some type of special attachment. Uh, this portion of the tendon where it uh, connects, the tip of the tendon connects to the tendon ball. So I think that's what's going on. Like here's the tip of the tendon and then here's the, the tendon ball like embedded in the tissue. Uh, and uh, so I wanted to show that image because um, some of these balls, they have like what may be like some type of attachment point uh, touched. Uh, stuck to them and again that could be natural it could be for deception purposes or it could be like actual eroding tendinous or fleshy material which is still connected to the tendon ball and some of these uh, I should have got a better image but some of these are like really off balance like it's a super heavy huge ball like this but then there's like a tiny little attachment to it but it's still like it looks like it should fall over, but it doesn't. So that's a testament to the strength of the contact. So that would lend credence to the tendon ball theory because the, the bonds are so strong, I guess. Uh, that's So the theory goes anyways. Um, again, compelling, somewhat compelling at least. Uh, certainly could be natural. There's this one. Let's see, kind of... Uh, either naturally eroded away or sinewy look to it. Again, I'm always considering the possibility of stage props or just like entire landscapes being a, a, uh, a nothing burger or a pattern soup. So this could just be pattern soup. Keep that in mind. Feature salad. Pick your, your favorite term, but I guess the idea is that kaolin clay, that's uh, K-A-O-L-I-N, clay, which is the soft clay stuff. This is the flesh or the former flesh of an animal. 
and then this would be the tendon ball is the idea. And again, hmm. Yeah, I mean, I was super into this this whole discussion a while back. I uh, just since I've seen so much gibberish on the surface, just like the random letters and the random little squiggle patterns and stuff. I just I have to wonder whether this is yet another type of squiggle, like the the ball itself is a squiggle, so to speak, and then this uh, whole landscape. Uh, the context for this ball is also a doodle or a random pattern or a bewildering type of setup, possibly. Uh, and then the lines are worth studying, uh, except in the case that they are meant to make you study them, in which case it's foolish to study them <laughs> because it's an attention trap. Like the feature of the lines might be a, uh, a dummy feature. Okay, I said that already. Um, this image, this may be key uh, in this discussion, or uh, it may be uh, somewhat revealing. Okay, so we have this, this layering here, right? We've got these kind of piles or uh, columns of whatever, which could be any number of things. Like, So I guess the idea would be that this could be petrified tissue from some type of large creature and then but the idea of this as a tendon ball so uh, this is kind of a subtle point but um, if this is a tendon ball and this is like the attachment point to it then why does the tendon ball have the same type of layering look to it as the flesh like it should look different right um, so maybe this is just eroding flesh in in that line of thinking and it just happens to take the shape of some of these stacks with the balls on top. Um, or maybe this is this itself is a type of clue that um, that some type of tomfoolery is going on or deception, because um, this may be uh, like they deliberately created this in the shape of these these stacks like this, but then they left the layering there to let you know that it's not a tendon ball or a ball um, because the layering is almost identical to the layering pattern up here. So, um, so it's not a secondary or um, a different component or a different material. This is basically the same material and uh, configure uh, or same material and makeup as this stuff up here. So it's as if they're telling you with this combination of attributes and the shape of it that it's not a tendon ball and by extrapolation that these may not be tendon balls either. That's, a, um, I mean, it's a mouthful and it's maybe a stretch. I will agree to that. But the, the subtle um, catch and throw or the the, the Venn diagramming of, or the intersection of feature types and uh, shapes and configuration of features, I think a, a careful compare and contrast of, of these uh, features and the way they appear does have an ultimate um, aspect of uh, pointing you towards the true nature of what created all this and how and why. Uh, so, <sighs> again, the idea of a discoverability knob, which someone cranked, so they, they're creating all this gibberish on the surface, and then to make the, uh, the authorship or the, the story behind that, um, discoverable to subsequent, uh, generations, they strung together, uh, a combination of features and shapes and context of those features, which has a, an elaborate uh, implication uh, uh, web, which ultimately implies, just barely, but ultimately implies the true nature of the origin of what you're looking at. So. 
again, this could just be natural. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just uh, trying to exhaust every possibility here. Um, petrified something or other, natural layers, any, any number of like natural explanations, obviously geological stuff, volcanic, um, sandstone, whatchamacallit, like petrified stalactites or any number of things and uh, flesh, uh, could be some f petrified flesh of some large creature. And then also not just the idea of petrified flesh, like a, a creature which is left to sit there undisturbed and turn into rock over long periods of time, but rather um, a creature which is um, transmogrified or artificially edited and uh, modified beyond recognition. So it, it retains some qualities of its biologicalness, but then it's some sophisticated uh, derpification process comes along and uh, modifies the, the tissue to a certain degree as a way, again, of muddying the water. So derpify meaning like just making it look wonky and weird. So just nonsensifying or, you know, taking a, an organic pattern or an organic carcass as this case may be, and then uh, applying some type of processing to it, which makes it like 20% weird looking, you know, like if you've seen those taxidermied foxes, or a taxid like bat Google Google bad taxidermy. Uh, taxidermy is T A X A D E R M Y, I think. And it's just like where an animal dies and they stuff the animal like, to commemorate it or as a souvenir or whatever. <laughs> but there's some really funny examples of bad taxidermy. <laughs> like uh there's one where a cat is turned into a a drone, like a quadcopter, and it's, it's super funny. Um, and there's one, f like a fox, which is, or a mountain lion, I think. Uh, I think both, actually, if I remember. They're just, the faces look so weird, like derpified. So that's what I mean by derpified. Like, they took the original animal and they, they made it like, they did the best they could in the case of taxidermy, but um, the end result is it looks like like 25% weird and creepy, so with a pretty comical effect. So that would be the idea of um, post-processing to make something uh, either still recognizable but weird or uh, taking it beyond a threshold of recognizability so that it no longer looks like big animal flesh or something. Okay. Um, all right, so this is, give me a second. This is Arches National Park in Utah. And this video is getting long, so I might call it a video uh, right after this little discussion here. But just, once again, the idea of the, the end of the tendon and the tendon ball. And then this Arches National Park has all these arches obviously, and they are attached to what looks like some kind of ball-like feature. So maybe one tendon ball here, maybe another one here, and maybe it was all petrified with some type of uh, either natural process over long periods of time, over, I'm sorry, or um, by a uh, artificial weapon of some kind or device. So maybe this was petrified artificially like a biological creature which was instantaneously turned to rock by some type of high technology. Could be, I mean, certainly. And then subsequently uh, uh, reconfigured to make it less recognizable as a biological creature. So that's possible. Um, I don't know how likely I think that is, but I mean, again, nothing would surprise me at this point. Uh, let me make this as big as it gets. And just a couple of features like these, uh, these scoopy marks. I could see these being natural erosion or 
like see see this one like over here look at that one's almost looking like just a little too abrupt i could be wrong there but and it's only one grainy image one portion of a grainy image but almost looking too crisp and abrupt there like like it's an artificial feature or something like there's plenty of like uh examples of possible giant handprints or like finger scrape marks in rocks or like melted rock which has like similar um streak or like finger marks type things elsewhere so uh, that can be observed in many places but here um yeah kind of a, a variation on that idea which is that these are artificial grooves or um derpy um, pseudo sensical or partially sensical uh, features which are just artificially imposed that's possible like this right here this, uh, this scoop here so this may be artificial tech just messing with the the whatever was there the the, the rock um, and similar thing up here, obviously. So it's, I mean, I'd say there's a 70% chance it's just natural. And it would have been 100% like two years ago <laughs> before I found out about a lot of this stuff. Um, but there's a possibility that some of these features are, uh, these scoopy features are um, artificial. Embe <clears throat> embellishment and we see the people here for scale so this is a pretty large thing here this would be what a 50 100 foot wide tendon ball so what what type of what size of creature would that imply well that might be commensurate with the size of the dragon we are looking at or uh, consistent with the, the possible size of the dragon and the fish or whatever so there, I mean, there may be some component of ex extra large animals comprising the Earth's surface. So keep it in mind. Don't write it off. All right. Uh, so let's move on and go to this guy, Landscape Arch. Um, landscape Arch. So, okay, just... Sorry, I had a brain fart there for a second. I was stalling. Uh, so just another possible uh, tendon material. That's the theory anyway. This, I would say, that just looks natural, like natural erosion. Either that or artificially made to look natural, like, like I talk about. But I wouldn't say that looks particularly like an, an eroded tendon. I don't know. I think there's a closer look at it. Um, the, the flat seams I find interesting. Uh, could just be differential erosion. But the, the clean seams between the layers, sometimes it looks a little odd to me. Uh, double arch here, this arch, that arch. Possible remnants of tendinous flesh. And then this guy here. Um, and I guess one more time I'll reiterate the possibility that uh, some type of transmogrification tr blah, 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 transmogrification or modulation uh, process was used to modify whatever patterns are there on the Earth's surface beyond all recognition. So no matter what this was in the first place, it's possible that something came along and just did some type of really advanced um, manipulation of the material to just make it into some type of um, nonsensical end result or indecipherable, let's say, an indecipherable end result. So maybe some advanced like drone, like a, a, a big, a big device just like flies around and its sole purpose is to uh, render whatever it encounters in indecipherable. So it says, okay, 
I'm looking at uh, a petrified elephant right now or something like that. Uh, it just happens to slightly resemble an elephant, but not my best guess. But it, it comes across something, and then its, its sole purpose is to uh, modify whatever feature it's looking at beyond recognition, um, beyond uh, the point where we could discover what it is. So that's possible. So I think things have been configured, like entire landscapes even, uh, to the point where they're meant to reside in this weird middle space, this weird um, confluence of features which we can't quite make heads or tails of. So I think that's part of the design of this whole uh, tooling of Earth agenda, or that's what I'm calling it, but whatever agenda we're dealing with. And what am I seeing here? Possible artificial carvings there, and possible artificial markings. And I, just out of the corner of my eye, I noticed like these, like looking like possibly uh, worked over cliff sides. See a lot of that in the Utah area, Colorado as well, like these flat uh, worked over surfaces potentially. So that may be a component to consider as well. Okay, and then also, um, uh, before I comment on this image, I wanna discuss the possibility that there's like some type of game similar to the telephone game, if you ever played that in elementary school or something. So the idea is like you whisper something into your neighbor's ear and they try and uh, understand what you said and they just turn to the neighbor next to them and whisk, like repeat what you said to their neighbor. So the idea is that like when you have 30 people in a room or something, eventually something gets lost in translation and uh, there's a... Um, uh, a distortion of the original message. So maybe the original phrase was like uh, catnip and by the end of it somebody, the 30th person thinks that the first person said like uh, cupcake or something like that. You know what I mean? So okay, so why do I bring that up? So I wonder whether there's a game being played where like Iteration after iteration after iteration after iteration, uh, the parties or the teams, the uh, the players in the game, they take whatever patterns the person before them created and they just make a new pattern out of it. They just make it into whatever using whatever methods. <laughs> um, I think that'd be funny. Uh, and that would definitely make things like... If we're talking about 30... 30 rewrites to this this site and many many sites then there's no way we're going to be able to figure out what it is because it's it's 30 phases do you understand what i'm saying like uh so when we see these derpy sites with multiple types of features and shapes and all kinds of weird stuff going on uh, there's a chance that that's multiple phases of uh, rewrites and revamps uh, by by high tech um, or even by low tech but uh, so there may be a long long time scales geological component like just natural uh, geological evolution and uh, weathering and all that and then there may be uh, multiple phases of uh, rewriting the previous players patterns and it doesn't even have to be a game, it could just be a, a strategy, like the same person um, rewriting their patterns over and over, rewriting uh, features, modifying them slightly over and over, just to, to continually pull the rug out from under us um, as one possible agenda behind it, but there's many possible agendas behind that. Um, but maybe, yeah, to like, continuously sl very slowly but surely um, always be modifying stuff like modify it this way that way the other way make it nonsensical this way make it sensical this way just continual uh, refreshing like a refresh button hit on um, on the features of earth and uh, the features of civilization so someone's always slowly revamping and refreshing 
the configuration of what we're dealing with or where we live. Uh, and if that's the case, then that keeps us from discerning our context properly. And it keeps us uh, stuck in like this middle, this uh, like trying to climb the, the downside of the escalator, like the escalator, like the, the one that goes down, like trying to walk up it, but uh, it's continually re, uh, recycling itself so that you can't, so that you just stay in one spot. So I think that's the type of system we're dealing with. And I'll talk more about that in a, a future video where I just talk about big picture stuff. Um, but yeah, consider the that there might be many phases of this uh, re, um, reconfiguration. Okay, so this image, what do we got? We have this much thicker arch here, or like just a big thick layer of rock and then uh, this nice wide tunnel here. So this doesn't strike me as like a tendon material type situation. Just doesn't look that way. Although there could certainly be a tendon embedded in this uh, stretch of rock here somewhere. But this is looking, I don't know, either like a natural cave or possibly like an artificial one. Like we've seen many artificial caves. Uh, in previous videos. So, and then this one up here, a second one, again, maybe, maybe tendon, um, but, uh, no apparent tendon ball, although they're, they may be again embedded in the rock still, it hasn't eroded away to be revealed. But, um, this particular example, it just doesn't strike me as tendon material. And this, I just noticed this line here, probably nothing. Uh, okay. Anything else? Uh, I would just say this does not feel like good evidence for the tendon thing. And then also the possibility that it's artificial arches. And then natural, of course, obviously. Okay, uh, this image is pretty cool. There's a very uh, striking look to a lot of Utah. And I'm gonna throw Arizona and Colorado in there as well. Um, like uh, Moab Canyon, uh, Zion National Park, where else? Uh, just a lot of a lot of these vast wilderness areas in uh, Arizona, Utah, and Colorado, and probably Idaho, and lots of places. But there's kind of a this is almost reminding me of Petra, but not quite. So like if Petra is uh, s like 70% artificial, Petra in Jordan, then something like this might be 8% um, artificial, like per some type of algorithm or something like that. So, um, so these are almost looking to me like they're, they have some features of like archeological ruins, like especially this little wall thing up here. I feel like it's almost too thin to be naturally eroding like that. And these almost resembling like spires on the top of a building. Uh, I feel stupid even saying that, but again, it's just a spidey senses thing. Like, uh, let's see, that's a little grainy, but I can't say there's any feature which definitely definitively stands out to me as like, OMG, this, this whole area was uh, worked over artificially. It's just kind of a, a collective subjective thing, like uh, the, the way the surfaces um, look, like some of these lines across, uh, some, like some of these markings, hot, like these markings, possible st stuff like that, like this marking, this marking. Just very subtle stuff that obviously could just be the natural layers and stuff, but, and this is almost like, this is like 1% brick-like or like, like 2% brick-like, like a, a brick wall or something, you know? And here are like these regular lines here, 
uh, and like this almost smooth wall. There's just, and this almost looks like a flying buttress or like some type of edifice. That's, it's so frustrating and um, I almost feel foolish presenting the idea, but uh, yeah, I, there, I think there's a, there may be some type of derpy artificialness going on in this general area. Like machine, but in such a way that it's supposed to look mostly natural. Possibly it's out there, but it's possible, I guess. And shoot, this video is pretty long. I'm going to call it a video right now. And uh, we will pick up with this moon in the next video. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching and check out the next one. All right, later.